In this lesson, we'll learn how to build this infinite toast interaction with Webflow collections and GSAP. So to get started, let's add a collection list connected to our collection. We'll give the collection wrapper a class of toast wrap. We'll give it a width of 28 rim, a max width of 100% so it doesn't overflow, and a height of 8 rim. The collection list will give a class of toast list. It'll have a width and height of 100% of its parent, like so. And the collection item will have a class of toast item. It will be a width and height of 100% as well. And we want all of the items to stack on top of each other, so we'll give them position absolute to cover their full parent, which means the parent, in this case the wrapper, will be set to position relative. Now here on this item, let's go ahead and give it a light background color, a dark text color, and a border radius. And inside of that, let's add in an image with the class of toast image. We'll go ahead and connect that to our image here. Let's give it a width of seven rim. We'll select the whole item and apply flex and align to the left center. And then inside that, let's add in an H6 and we'll connect that to the name and we'll give that a class of name. And let's also just add in a text element and let's connect that to the order. Now this name here, let's go ahead and set it to grow if possible and text align center. We'll also just add on a gap so that the text doesn't run into each other. And we'll just also add some padding. I'll do 0.5 rim on all sides, except for this right side here. We'll push this over a bit more like so. And on the image, let's go ahead and give it a border radius just to round off the corners. Now we're also gonna have a background div that can make each uh, item feel a little bit darker the further back it is. So we'll give this a class of toast background and we want it to be position absolute to cover the full item. And we'll go ahead and give it a width and height of 100% of its parent. And for now, I'll just fill it in with any color here. So I want it to inherit the border radius of the whole item. So I'll give it a border radius inherit. So it just receives from its parent. And we want the other content to be on top. So we'll move the toast background underneath. We'll go ahead and give all of the other items position relative like so. And I'll do the same thing here. I'll say toast number and position relative. And that way it's just sitting on top of the background. Now for the background, I'll go ahead and give it a black background color and I'll set its opacity to something like 20% by default. And that's all we need for the structure. Let's move on to our code. Now we want this interaction to work even if we have multiple of these collection wrappers on the page. So we'll select all of them with document query selector all. We'll grab each of those toast wrap collection wrappers and we'll loop through each of them one by one with a for each. And we're gonna call these our component. So we'll go ahead and select the items inside of this. So I'll say let items equal this component, this collection wrapper. And then we'll do query selector all to fall into all the items inside it called toast item. And once we have those, we want to create a function where we can animate them. And we want to run that function on page load like so. Now we only want to deal with one of those items at a time. So I'll say const active item. I'll say all of the items and filter it down to only the first one like this. So, and let's go ahead and create a timeline with GSAP. So I'll say let TL equal gsap.timeline. And we'll first of all set the initial states of this active item. So I'm going to set it to a scale of one by default, and I'll set it to a Y percent of zero. And then we want to start moving it up and scaling it. So we'll say to a scale of 1.1 to a Y percent of negative 30. And by putting this Y percent after the scale, this is negative 30% of its new size, including that scale. If we were to put Y percent before the scale, this would be negative 30% of its original size. And then the scale is just added on top of that. So we'll go ahead and keep it in this order. And then after here, we'll go ahead and increase the scale to 1.2 and the Y percent to negative 60% to pull it up more the scale to 1.3 and Y percent to negative 90. And at this point, we want to also fade it out with opacity zero, and we'll also blur it with a blur of 0 0.5 rim. Now, whenever we go to animate this element again, it's gonna start off with the opacity zero and the blur again. So we need to reset our initial states so that we're canceling this out. Go back to full opacity, go back to no blur. 
um, so that when we animate this element again, um, we're resetting those initial values. So now that we have that set, let's just see how this is looking. So if we refresh here, notice how it needs to pause between each step. So on the timeline, we'll add some defaults and we'll go ahead and set that here. And we'll set the default uh, delay between the start of each of these tweens to be 0.8 seconds. And we'll set the default ease for each of these tweens to be power one in out so that we're also easing the start of each step, not just the end. And since this is initial state, we don't really need any delay before this. We want it to happen instantly. So I'll set the delay to zero. And if we save that, we'll notice that we now have that pause between each step like so. Now, as soon as this uh, first item moves into that second place, we want to start animating the next item. So what we can do here is this is where we're moving that item into the next place. And we can say on complete of this step. So whenever we finish it, we want to go ahead and rerun our animate function so it can animate that next item. Now, by default, every time we run this, it's just grabbing the first item. So we need to save which item we're on. I'll create a variable called active index, and I'll set that to negative one by default. And then each time we run this function, we'll increase active index by one. So the very first time we run it, active index will be zero because we've added one to this. And then we can go ahead and just target the items dynamically with that variable so that each time we run this function, it's grabbing the next item in the list. And that's happening on complete of this step here. So if we save that, we should notice is after the first item moves in, we grab the next item and then the next and so on and so forth. Now we want each next item coming in to be on a lower Z index than the previous item. So I'll create a variable here called Z index and I'll set it to a really high number by default. And each time we run our function, we'll go ahead and decrease Z index by one, like so. And then we want to apply that Z index for this initial state of the item. So I'll go ahead and set the Z index to be our Z index variable, like so. And now if we save that, we should notice that it's actually just gonna put each uh, incoming item on a lower Z index. Now we also need to get our background color working out here. And we do have this sort of background element. We can fade down its opacity like so. But the problem we'll run into here is instead of just uh, selecting the active item, we would now have to select the background inside that active item for each of these three steps. So a cleaner way we can handle it is we can go ahead and create a variable on this background element. So I'll set its opacity to a variable of background opacity. And by default, since we didn't define the value of that variable anywhere, it's just going to be full opacity. Um, but we can set a fallback by adding a comma here. So if the value of this isn't set, we'll fall back to 20%, 0.2. And so that's our initial value here. But as soon as we apply a value on this item here, then the child inside will receive the value of that variable. So I'll just go ahead and publish. So that means in here, where we're setting um, the initial value, this scale here, I'll say after y percent. Let's go ahead and set um, our variable. We call this uh, background opacity, and we'll set that to 0.2 percent, uh, 20 percent, like so. And then here, for this first step, we'll animate it to 10 percent, and for this next step, we'll animate it to uh, 0 percent, so it's fully revealed. And then after that, we'll fade out the whole sort of element. So we should be able to save this and it should be animating the brightness each step. It's getting progressively brighter like so. Now we also want to make this infinite so it doesn't reach the end of the list like it's doing now. And here we're just increasing the active index every time, even if we don't have enough items after this. So what we want to do is just check to see what's the value of the active index and how many items do we have. So if the active index, let's say that we're on, we're, we're on the last item, we have six items that would be an active index of five would grab us that last item. Let's say we're on that and we'll say, in that case, we'll let it move on. We'll let it animate that fifth item. But if active index is actually six and we don't have enough items, then we need to say if active index is equal to, we'll say items.length, which we have six items here, but index is offset by negative one. So if we don't have enough items anymore to continue this, we'll reset active index back to the beginning, back to zero. 
And that way we can go ahead and save this and it should just loop infinitely when we get to that last item. So that would be item six. Then it'll just allow us to just restart this loop. Now notice something that's going on here is it's filling in that empty spot here with the next item, but that's happening after that's offset one. And that's because we really want, instead of filling in the next item here, after this first animation is complete, we want it to be filled in all the way from the beginning right here. So we'll go ahead and select our next item. Um, I'll say let next index. And by default, that would be easy to just say active index uh, plus one. So we just grab the next item in the list. But again, what if there is no next item and we're on the last one already? So to do that, we can just say active index and we'll say modulus, which is right here, item length. And what that does is um, if, we, if there's not enough items, it'll go back to zero, similar kind of to what we're doing up here. So this will just be always the item after the current one. So once we have that index, we can just say let next item and that'll be items uh, next index, like so. So we're grabbing that next item here, and then we just want to set its initial state. So I'll go ahead and copy this. The initial state of our next item is going to be a scale of 1, uh, Y percent, uh, like so. Opacity is all good here. And the only thing we really need to change is we need to put it on a lower Z index than this item here. So we'll say whatever our Z index variable is, minus 1. And if we save that, now we should have it working smoothly where whenever it animates, we're not going to see that empty spot like we were seeing there. And then once we get to the end of the list, it's not just going to jump and fill in a card because we have the next item already back there and ready to go at the correct Z index um, when our animation starts. And that's really all we need to make this infinite interaction in Webflow.